Hey, Master Gardeners, I'm out early this morning because I've been admiring some of the flowering trees this spring. It seems to me that the, some of them are more beautiful than ever. And this happens to be a native tree. I'm at the Ronnie Activity Center in Falston, Maryland, and here we are late May. This one's finishing, but it is a native tree that has cascading white blossoms, kind of look like that black uh, locust that I showed you a few days ago. But this one is even fragrant, just like that, and a beautiful native. So you're probably saying, well, what could it be? Uh, Virgilia, does that ring a bell with anybody? Maybe you don't know that common name. This one is actually a American yellow wood and not a common tree. It's not even a common native in the states where it's found. Actually, the conservation status of this guy is actually threatened in some of the states. So this is a good tree for us to be planting to save it in its natural environment. So let's talk a little bit about it. Cladastrius lutea used to be the species name. It's now uh, Kentuckia, Kentuckia ea. So obviously the species name refers to the fact that it's native to Kentucky, Tennessee, Northern Georgia, and it's in those places that it's found in different coves, moist coves, alkaline soil, can be in sun, can be in shade. So obviously root system is somewhat adaptable. But you're asking, well, if it's a native tree and it's got pretty white blossoms that cascade and are fragrant, why doesn't everybody have one in their yard? There's characteristics that are not so desirable. One of them is it has a tap root system. So therefore it's hard for them to sell them in the nursery. There's, we only have one genus a species of Cladastris in the United States. There are two other species that are from Asia, and sometimes you can find them in the cultivation trade. But actually, th these are just hard to find plants. So number one reason they're hard to find is that they don't uh, transplant very well. So you need to buy them when they're really young. The second reason is they tend to branch really low, and the branch crotches in the tree happen to be not very strong, and they're brittle. So if you have it in a windy location, they can break up. So they're a little bit fragile in that respect. And there's bleeders, which means when you prune it, it tends to drip, 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 sap all the time. So this is a tree that needs to be pruned only in the summer months. But come on over, I want you to show the beautiful, show you the beautiful blossoms because it's an eye catcher when it comes in bloom. The thing is, it doesn't always bloom every year, it tends to be every other and sometimes every third. But what a beautiful flower. So can you see all the authors that talk about it admire its handsome foliage. It's in the Fabiaceae family, which is um, makes a bean in the fall months. And it has a very ornamental bark in the respect that it has beech-like bark. But it's really these wisteria-like blossoms that catch my attention. They're on the they're on the end of their flowering stage. But look at that beautiful blossom, loved by pollinators. Now it's already fading, so I wish I'd come out a week ago and gotten them. When I was down in the Faustin area at the Harvest Fair, they had a pink tint to those. But when I went down early this morning, they were already finished. But look at that cascading blossom. I'll stick my hand in there so you get a frame of reference. But pretty cascading flowers. And you don't you wonder why everybody doesn't have it? Let's look a little closer at the foliage. So it is an alternate compound leaf. And one of the unique characteristics is, you know, most often you think of compound leaves and usually these little leaflets are opposing each other. They're usually in pairs, but as you can see, this one is not. Their little leaflets are alternating. And usually this terminal leaflet tends to be a little bit larger than the other leaflets. Now, I can't say that that's a characteristic that I, on this one, I can see that. There you can see that terminal leaflet. So what, two, four, six, seven leaflets on there, and they're alternating, these leaflets, or these leaves are alternating down the stem. So the, um, the other characteristic that I'd say is the Asian species, the calyx of the flower tends to be hairy. It tends to be covered with a pubescence, whereas these are not pubescent on there. But, and as I said, they're already fading beautiful cascading fragrant pollinator plant. So there you go, American yellow wood. And it's called yellow wood because it, it has a heartwood that turns yellow. And really multiple seasons of ornamental interest and a really pretty native. So how about that, Master Gardeners?